Today we're checking out the long-awaited, dare I say, controversial Nintendo Switch portable docking kit by Nyko. Welcome to You Came From A Box, I'm Sergio AM, and if you watched our Nintendo Switch review, if you haven't, you can see it up there, uh, you'll find that we didn't really have anything bad to say about the official dock. It's not bad, I actually like this thing. Um, it comes with the Switch, I call it the toaster. It works really well, it's easy to use, it provides a few outputs, and most importantly, it lets us connect the Switch to a TV. But... After using it for a few months, we had two issues with it. One, it's a pain to travel with because it's a bit large, and since it's plastic, you don't want to risk it bending or breaking in your bag. One way to solve that is with a custom carrying case or bag, which has the space and padding for it, but these just sort of defeat the purpose of having a portable console. You have to take a bag designated for that console. Two, it's cumbersome to move from room to room. I hate moving this thing from downstairs to upstairs. You have to unplug all the wires, then plug all the wires back in to the dock and the TV. Quickly, that becomes annoying. So to fix that, you can buy another official dock from Nintendo, but it's expensive at $90. So that's where the portable $50 docking kit by Nyko comes into play. Let's take a look. And here is the box. It matches all their other Switch accessory boxes. Portable docking kit. So on the side, portable solution, HDMI out, and the voltage. On the back, there's a lot of info on the features. TV mode everywhere, charge and play. Here's an image of the dock in action. Then HDMI out, built-in USB ports, and below that, what's included in the box. Let's open it up. First up, we have our AC to USB-C adapter with nice retractable prongs. Then there's the star of the show, the dock. Very clean, very simple. And finally, below that, we have our HDMI cable. As you can see, it's almost half the size of the official dock and very lightweight. Much easier to toss in a bag and even some of those smaller switch cases. So different size, no spring assisted connection and no LED like the official one, but that's not a big deal. At the top, we have the USB-C connection along with the two plastic prongs, same as the official dock, that help you align it correctly with the console. Under the dock in this little spot, we have the backrest, which we slide to unlock. It goes in this slot right behind the USB-C port with the switch icon facing the front and this helps support the switch. It's very nice and snug, but still easy to remove. Then we grab our switch, align it with the prongs in USB-C port and slide it down until it's fully rested. Unlike the official dock where you can pretty much drop it in, here you have to be careful and make sure you align it correctly to avoid damaging anything. Once it's in, you can slowly push it back so it rests in a slight angle. On the back, we have all our ports nicely labeled. There's the USB-C for power, HDMI output for the display, and then you have two USB 2.0 ports and one 3.0, all the same as the official dock. So it's smaller, but you can still charge your Pro Controller, hook up an Ethernet adapter to it, and if you're at a hotel traveling with it, you can even use it for something like um, charging your phone. It gives you a lot of options. Now let's talk about some of the concerns that are floating around online. Some problematic and some less so. Let's start with the connection. The official dock, you can connect the switch with one hand, just slowly drop it in and vice versa to take it out. Very simple. With Nikos, you can insert it with one hand, but you need two hands for removal. one to hold down the dock and the other to pull out the switch. Otherwise, that dock ain't going nowhere. For those wondering, this dock is not compatible with normal cases. Maybe with some very thin ones, but even then, they need to have the cutout for the prongs next to the USB-C port and enough clearance for the backrest which sits flush against the switch. 
Next, the USB-C port is always exposed. It does not retract. That means that the USB-C port along with those prongs can potentially get damaged with enough force, so you'll have to be cautious when traveling with it. Then there's ventilation. As we can see back here, that little backrest only covers the edge of those two vents, so the switch has more than enough room to breathe. No problem there. The next thing is that this setup can be pretty fragile. Is it fragile or fragile? Let's go with fragile, it sounds better. A, a bit of force in any direction, and I'm sure this can easily break, but of course, this is only an issue if you're not careful with it. Now, one thing that was big over on Reddit was output performance. Some users reported experiencing darker image quality and even choppy gameplay, so we tested it with some games by switching it back and forth between the docks to see if there was a difference, but we didn't notice any. The colors seem the same, frame rate as well, and no issue with the audio. Finally, the one that scared people the most, including myself, were reports that their dock fried their switch, which caused it to just die. Clearly, we didn't have that issue here, but over on Reddit, Nyko had an AMA in which they addressed that concern. So if you do have a problem with it, you may have sadly just gotten a dud, which you should be able to exchange, and if not, Nyko should have your back. So at first, I didn't realize how versatile this thing was until we started using it. At home, it's a secondary dock for the bedroom, and when we're not using it, we can just easily slide it behind the TV, it's out of sight. In the office, I can just unplug the HDMI cable and use it as a play and charge stand for tabletop mode on my desk. And when we're visiting family or friends, it's way easier to take this with us than the official one, which is pretty large. I mean, just, you know, that says it all, right? Clearly, as you can tell, I'm a fan of this dock. It has not let us down, but let us know what you think of it in the comments below. I know some of you out there have had issues with it, but some have not, so let's talk about that. Also, because our Nintendo Switch accessories video blew up, not literally, we're working on a second video with even more accessories that you all wanted to see, including some new ones, as well as a small giveaway. So if you have any you want us to check out in that video, let us know in the comments below or on Twitter. And as always, we'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.